Amid many of the debates around entitlements and benefits, one thing often gets lost. That's that many people who qualify for help struggle to get and keep their benefits because it can be difficult to navigate the system. Economics correspondent Paul Salman looks at that challenge as part of our special series, America's Safety Net. You want tea too? Single mom Morgan Wingate is eligible for food stamps, but getting them? You'll think that you did everything you were supposed to do. Then you come to find out that you're supposed to be doing something else. Jessica Joyner's experience. I submit my paperwork and it'll be two or three months had gone by where I get a response. Um, sometimes they don't get my information. You really have to be on top of every piece of mail that comes in. Lori Ann Mills food stamps were once cut off. I didn't have my birth certificate or something. I didn't have access to it. Georgetown University's Pamela Hurd co-authored the book Administrative Burden. It can feel like a full-time job, both getting on those programs and then actually staying on them. Aurel Amram has seen the challenges in her work for Code for America. You might have to fill out a form that could take you over an hour to complete with questions that are potentially incomprehensible that can make you really nervous that you're answering incorrectly. The results are stark. Literally billions in unclaimed benefits, says Amran. There is $80 billion of money left on the table every single year because of how hard it is to navigate these hurdles. Morgan Wingate's job has kept her from the in-person appointments required to maintain her WIC benefits, supplemental nutrition for women, infants, and children. I just gave up. I just said, you know what, I'm not going to be able to make it because a lot of their appointments are during my work hours. Yet Wingate, who works as a caregiver for people with disabilities, needs all the help she can get just to feed her kids. I don't make enough to take care of all of my children and um, pay my bills. So um, that is stressful. I make me upset. <laughs> Lori Ann Mills recently got a letter saying her Medicaid benefit was stopped because she did not recertify correctly. I'm actually holding off on going to the doctor until I get it straightened out. That's my crisis. It takes that one little crisis. Mills' finances were already precarious. If it's not worrying about the quality of the food that you get just to make it to the end of the month and the fact that even the cheap is so expensive now. You know, there's that, and then came up short on my rent. You know, what if they put a note on my door? You know, the stress of hearing that knock. The stress of how am I gonna catch up? The safety net's entanglements take a toll, says Pamela Hurd. This is where it really hits people actually hard, I think. It's just the amount of stress, anxiety, and frustration people experience. Janan Jones had her own struggles with getting benefits, but nothing like one of her friends. She was in the shelter and she got kicked out. She has a child to provide for, so she, she had to do what she had to do. What did she do? She went into prostituting because she couldn't get any assistance, and um, she did what she thought was right to provide for her and her son. Nose? No. So why is it so hard for people? It's about layers and layers of accumulated policy and regulations. We're very good at adding things and very bad at taking away regulations and requirements. And government agencies are stretched thin. Governments are seeing record numbers of cases continuing from the pandemic with also record staff vacancies. But there are folks out there trying to make it easier. This is the Providers app. This app from Jimmy Chen's company Propel, based in Brooklyn, keeps track of your monthly food stamp use. This is uh, your transaction history as well as your deposit date. Rather than call a 1-800 number to access the balance for your benefit card, called an EBT card, users can see their balance on the app for free. Very similar to kind of how a bank might offer you a mobile app that lets you see your balance and transaction history, we did that same thing for the EBT card. And we currently serve more than 5 million households each month. Of the 20 million American households with EBT cards, after stints at Facebook and LinkedIn, Chen launched Propel in 2014. 
You've got companies like Uber and Airbnb, companies that are solving the problems faced by the demographic profiles of people who work in tech. Relatively well-off people. Relatively well-off people, yeah, solving their own problems. And the thing that made me uncomfortable was a feeling that in this day and age, low-income families also have access to smartphones and use the internet on a regular basis. And there are just way fewer software companies applying these state-of-the-art technology practices to solve their problems. Now, Propel is a profit-making company, but Chen insists... The way that we can build the scalable, sustainable impact that we're trying to build, not just a one-time summer project that helps people a little bit and then goes away, is by building a scalable business model behind it. And that model includes job listings, a no-fee debit card, ads offering consumer discounts. If you are purchasing online groceries through Walmart, they've given us this coupon code for our users to be able to get some money off their orders. So this is one of the forms we're working to improve. At nonprofit Code for America, Orel Amram is also trying to ease the process by simplifying government forms. I believe this one is 16 pages. Verification, you'll need copies of all of the following, all in capital letters, but copies of your official copy, oh my goodness. That's just the first page. That's just the first page, and so already you're in this mindset of fear and stress yeah, yeah. <laughs> before you even started. So how to make it user-friendly? This is the form we helped Minnesota redesign. It used to take over 100 minutes on average. Now it's mobile friendly. So we use things like the font size to draw your attention to certain areas, right, right. just the information you need to know. Right. So you know what sections you can skip, you can see where you're supposed to check a box. There's all sorts of visual cues. And so for an application that used to take an average of 110 minutes to fill out, we ultimately get to a form that takes 12 minutes on average, is available in multiple languages, is at a third grade reading level for the same nine benefit program. It's all an effort to reduce the burden on folks like Laurieann Mills. We're here because we're down already. You know what I mean? Don't make it any more painful than it already is. <laughs> After all, the safety net eligible just want to get what's supposed to be theirs. For the PBS NewsHour, Paul Salmon.